Hi, BC family. Welcome to your midweek devotion. So this week, I want to talk to you guys about do you see it? As I was putting away Christmas this week and getting out stuff for the new year, my daughter came across my vision board and she started to remind me of all the things that we didn't actually accomplish on the vision board. And in that moment, I I had to have a choice. I had to choose a mindset about what has happened and what is to come. And as we enter into a new year, a lot of those things seem to come up as we start to get ready to say goodbye to the past year and enter a new year. And I could have looked at where we were in the moment and I could have chosen to focus on the goals that were not accomplished. We're not in the financial state we want to be in, not at the job we thought we were going to be in. We're not where we thought we would be in, in lots of different areas of our life. And I could have focused uh, looking down and at my circumstances rather than up and from. I could have let the emotions of defeat, um, frustration, anger, grief consume, but rather I chose to focus on what God helped us to accomplish, right? I reminded her and myself of all that God had done, whether it be it what was actually on my board or what also God did that I didn't even see coming that was great and mighty things. Then we looked at what we didn't accomplish because there is quite a few things that didn't get accomplished. And I told her they didn't get accomplished yet. That is a powerful word, yet. Just because a year is ending doesn't mean that God is done with his plan and purpose for you. Yet is a powerful word. It's something to cling to. We all have a choice as we get ready to enter a new year. We can look down and at our circumstances, our year, and take that mindset with us into the new year, or we can choose to look up and from. Look up and from the place where we're at and look towards what is to come. What do you see for 2022? You see, we move towards what we consistently see. That's what we gravitate towards. That's what we move towards. So the question is this week, what are you seeing? What is before you? What are your expectations? Genesis 13, 14, God told Abram after Lot had left him, he said, now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are standing, northward and southward, eastward and westward. For all the land which you see, I will give to you and your descendants forever. Abraham had to lift up his eyes and look from where he was standing. Where he was standing, it looked like Lot just took everything that was good and great and he was left with nothing. From where he was standing, it looked like he got the short end of the stick. But God told him, don't look at where you are. Look at where you are going. Look up and from. And then in verse 15, God continued to say, for all the land which you see, I will give to you. He not only had to look up and from where he was standing, but he had to see. And what he saw is what God would give him. So what is your hope for 2022? Now, I wanted to use the word hope because I wanted to clarify God's definition, the biblical definition of hope. Because right now in this day and age, you hear the word hope used a lot. Oh, I hope this happens. I hope that the doctor's report is good. I hope I feel better. I hope my finances are good. And it's a, it, the, the definition of hope has become more of a wing and a prayer and a cross your fingers, maybe it'll work. But that is not God's biblical definition of hope. His biblical definition of hope is so much more powerful. So hope, the biblical definition, is confident expectation. It's an eager anticipation or belief that something will happen or take place in your life. Now that is a powerful definition. Hope isn't just a wish, a fingers crossed. It's confident expectation. Romans 15, 13 says, may the God of hope, may the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound and be overflowing with hope. In today's New English version or English version, it begins with, I pray that God, the source of hope. So when we look up and from and see what 2022 will bring, we need to have God's hope with us. We need to be full of God, the source of our hope, and be overflowing in confident expectation. This confident expectation, when we have it, when we have those promises, then it fills us with joy and peace. Why is that? 
because we see what God is doing and going to do for us. And it's a glorious thing. We see it just like Abraham had to see it, but he saw it with confident expectation, with hope. Psalm 62, five says, my soul wait only upon God and silently submit to him for my hope and expectation are from him. So do you see it? Do you see what he has for you despite what 2021 brought you, despite where you are standing? Do you see it? Because your hope and expectation are from him. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you have no hope, if you're saying, well, I don't, I don't have any big vision for 2021 I don't have, or 2022, I don't have a hope. If you have no hope, you have nothing for your faith to give substance to. Hope and faith go hand in hand. When you have God's hope, then you have a confident expectation. You have something that faith can give substance to. It's needed. It's a necessity. And you may be listening right now and thinking, well, you don't know my life. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know the loss I've suffered, the year I've had, or what I've experienced. So you're right. But I want to tell you a quick story about Paul. Paul was in prison, facing death, and was in horrible circumstances. I mean, that's where he was at. That's where he was standing. Talk about a bad year and a rough place. He's in jail, facing death. Life's been brutal. But watch what he says in Philippians 1.19. He says, for I know that this shall turn. He was in a horrible moment and he spoke out his expectation. Verse 19 in the message says, I know how it's going to turn out. In the Amplified, the full verse says, for I know with confidence that this will turn out for my deliverance and spiritual well-being through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And then in verse 20, he says, It is my eager expectation and hope that looking toward the future, I will not disgrace myself nor be ashamed in anything. He knew how hope he knew that hope, his confident expectation is what was needed. He was in prison waiting to die and he said, no, nope, that's not how this is going to turn out. And it's not only through your prayers and through the supply of the power of God and the spirit, but he added, it is also because of his eager expectation and hope. He knew that needed to go with it. It had to go with what the prayers and what God was doing in his life. He had to have that hope, that confident expectation. You see, in adversity, that's when hope can be lost, right? He was in prison waiting to die, and he could have said, man, this is hopeless, right? He could have given in to where he was standing and looked down and at his circumstances. He could have lost hope, right? Hope can be lost when the bill comes, when the phone rings, when the doctor's report, when that one knock at the door. That is when hopelessness can sink in. But if you lose hope, then you have to remember you have nothing for your faith to give substance to. And like Paul, we need to become our own best cheerleader, right? He was also, he was alone by himself writing this letter, but he was encouraging himself. And remember how I told you with my daughter when we were talking about my, my vision board and what did get done and what didn't get done. One of the things that we did is we talked about what did get accomplished and we went back and reminded ourselves of everything that God did do. Psalms 42, five through six says, why are you cast down, O my sinner self, O my inner self? And why should you moan over me or be disquieted within me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him, for I shall yet, there's that word yet, praise him, my help and my God. Notice that they're talking to themselves, right? They're being their own cheerleader. Now in verse six, it says, O oh my God, my life is cast down upon me. and I find the burden more than I can bear. They were in a situation, a circumstance where it felt like it was more than they could bear. So what did this person do? They went on to say, therefore, will I earnestly remember you from the land of the Jordan and the summits of the Mount Hermon from the little mountain Mazar. In the message, it says, when my soul is in the dumps, I rehearse everything I know of you. So what are they doing? They're reminding themselves. They're rehearsing everything that God has done in their life. They're choosing to not focus on what didn't happen or the dire circumstances that they find themselves. No, they switched their mindset to what God has done, which fills them with hope 
the confident expectation for what he will do. It causes their eyes to look up and from and towards what God has. When David faced Goliath, Goliath began spouting things and saying things at him. And David had a moment where he rehearsed what God had done in, in, done in his life. David said, the lion and the bear came against me and God delivered them to me. He said that in the midst of going up against Goliath. Why? He was reminding himself of what God did do, which filled him with the confident expectation for what God would do. He was ready for Goliath because he was reminding himself of what God had already done. See, Satan hopes that we forget those parts, right? That when we reflect on a year, we focus on all the things that didn't happen, that went wrong, that left us where we're at. He's crossing his fingers that we allow our circumstances to become final authority in our lives. And that as hope fades, we will eventually give up and stay put rather than move forward into the blessings that God has in 2022. Because in order to go forward, you need to be able to see it. You need to look up and from and see so that God can give it to you. So as you finish out this week and enter into a new year, ask yourself, what do you see? Don't lose hope. Don't lose expectation. Shout and give God praise. Rehearse what he has done for you and shout, this too shall turn. Just like Paul did in that prison. This too shall turn. Grab hope, God's hope, the hope that is that confident expectation, that eager anticipation and belief that something will happen and take place in your life. Expect it, see it, and God will show up for you. Have a blessed week and a happy new year.